Hi, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you a new approach to topic modeling that I've created that can be pip installed, and it's called Leet Topic. And it allows for you to create an application just like this with all of the results from your topic model. And this application is a standalone HTML file, which means you can share it to somebody who doesn't have Python installed, and they can immediately start looking at and interrogating the results of your topic model. Now, to install this library, all you're going to have to do is go over to pip in your terminal and use pip. You can use pip install leet-topic. So what is leet-topic and how does it fit into the, the hierarchy of other topic modeling approaches? Well, it really doesn't seek to replace any of them. It's kind of built upon the principles of both top devec and BERT topic, and that it leverages transformer language models to encode or embed all of the documents that you want to model. It then uses UMAP and HDB scan to do some dimensionality reduction and identify clusters amongst those topics. And at this point, it kind of aligns nicely with both of those approaches. Where it differs, however, is in how it actually identifies and handles outliers, as we're going to see throughout this video. And on top of that, it allows for you to create a standalone application all in just one line of Python code. And in this video, I'm not going to presume that you have your data in a nice, neat, and orderly pandas data frame. We're going to work with some messy real-world data, and we're going to try to get it organized in some capacity so that it can be processed by this library leet topic. So go ahead, pip install leet-topic, and let's jump right into our notebook. Now, I'm going to have this notebook linked in the description down below. And it's mainly going to be following this approach right here, which is USHMM, and it's a Jupyter Notebook in the same repository. And if you want to see another example of how to handle this, you can look at this demo uh, Jupyter Notebook, and that'll show you how to work with a little bit of a different data set. But right now, we're working with a collection of oral testimonies from the Holocaust Museum in D.C., the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. And we're going to be grabbing and isolating different question and answer segments from these oral testimonies, and we're going to be putting them into a pandas data frame, and then we're going to process them with lead topic. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first library that we need is JSON. All these are JSON files. If you don't really know a lot about JSON, I have a couple videos on this channel, but if you follow what I'm doing here, it's going to work well for you. Uh, we're also going to import glob so that we can work with multiple files in a single directory. Glob makes that a little easier. We're also going to be working with pandas, so we're going to import pandas as pd. If you install leet topic, you're going to install pandas by default in your environment or on your system. And then finally, we're going to say from leet underscore topic, import leet underscore topic. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see this a bit more clearly. And if this is your first time running uh, the import for leet topic, it's going to be downloading the spacey NCORB Web SM or the small English pipeline. Now, right now, leet topic is a brand new library. It only supports English and a new update probably coming next week. It's going to have multilingual support because it's going to allow a user to pass in whichever hugging face transformer language model they want to. So you have a bit more flexibility in that regard. Uh, on top of that, it doesn't right now have a lot of other features such as an annoy index, which will be coming later on to make these documents searchable. But again, this out of the box will create a nice application for you. Now that we've got all of our libraries imported correctly, let's go ahead and start working with our files, which are going to be found in USHMM, and these are all going to be JSON files. So we're going to use glob. We're going to say glob.glob, .glob, and we're going to grab every file in uh, this USHMM subdirectory that is a .json file. And when we do this, we can say length of files, and we'll see that we have 10 of them. Fantastic. Now we're going to iterate over those files, so for file and files. And I'm going to make a collection of documents outside of this loop. And so I'm going to say for file and files with open, and I'm going to open up each of these files, which is a JSON file. I'm going to read it, and I'm going to set the encoding to UTF-8, and I'm going to open it up as F. And now I can create an object called data which is going to be equal to json.load, and I'm going to load in f, which is all of that json data. Now let's just take a quick look at this to see what it looks like. As you can see, we've got a header. Uh, it's a massive dictionary, and what we want to grab is specifically the key of segments. That's going to be where all of our question and answer pairs lie, and we're going to have a couple of these that don't align properly. I left a couple mistakes in here so we can kind of work with that. 
So we can say uh, for segment in data, we're gonna grab that key of segments. Let's print off segment. And for right now, I am just going to grab only the first file. And we see that we got everything loaded up kind of nicely. If I were to go through, however, and print off all these, we would start to hit some kind of error. So what I wanna do now is demonstrate this by saying documents.append, and I'm going to append two things here. I'm gonna append a dictionary that has a key of text, which is gonna be equal to, um, let's just say, uh, let's say segment question. And then I'm gonna have another key, a file, which is going to be there we go, which is going to correspond to the actual file name. This way, when I uh, process everything, I'll know what each segment corresponds to which JSON file. And then I'm also going to do this for every single answer as well. And these are gonna be the documents or the texts that we want to perform topic modeling on. Let's go ahead and do that. And everything works out well for file one, but let's go ahead and try to run it over everything and we get an error. Now this error is telling me that there's a key error. These are messy JSON files. Now I know that this error is not gonna be triggered every time, so I can introduce a try here and I'm not really caring about missing a couple of these segments. I'm just gonna say try accept key error. So if there's a key error, just completely ignore it. And let's grab the length of our segments. And it helps if you actually have documents here. There we go, 1252. So we have 1,252 different set, uh, documents. And let's go ahead and take a look at these. We'll just grab the first two. Uh, as you can tell, that's exactly what we would expect. Uh, I need you to start off by telling me your name, place of birth, and date of birth. This is oftentimes how these oral testimonies will start out. And then we have the response followed by right here. So we got all of our data that we want to model. Now comes the fun time of following the uh, t elite topic documentation. Now, if you look here, all we actually need to, uh, to create the bouquet application that you can send to your friends or colleagues is one line of Python code. And it's also gonna give us a lot of different data. So let's go ahead and work with the lead topic function from the lead topic library. So what we're gonna say is new DF, this is our new data frame that we're actually gonna have. And it actually helps if you create a data frame first. So we're gonna create a data frame called DF using pandas. If you're not familiar with pandas, it's a way of working with tabular data inside of Python. And the elite topic library as of right now expects a pandas data frame. So let's go ahead and pass in our documents and take a look at our data frame. And it looks just like this. A series of 1,252 rows that have two columns that correspond to the text and the file number. So down here, we're creating our new DF, our new data frame, and we're also gonna be creating our topic data. And that's gonna be equal to elite underscore topic dot elite topic with a capital L and a capital T here. And this is going to take a couple different mandatory arguments. The first thing it needs to have is the actual data frame that we want to pass to the pipeline that's going to process everything. And then we also have to specify the actual document field. Now the document field here is gonna be the, the header title, the row, or sorry, the column that actually has the documents that you want to model. And so in our case, we want to model the document field that's equal to, I think I called it text, yep, text. Now the next thing that we have to pass in is our HTML file name. The HTML file name is gonna be the name of your bouquet applications, so something like demo.html. I'm gonna call this ushmm2.html. And then the final thing that we need to pass in, and this is optional, is max distance. Now, one of the things that makes Leap Topic different from top to vec is that top to vec will handle outliers by taking them and assigning them to the nearest vector, topic vector, uh, so essentially anything that's negative one gets allocated to another topic. This is very useful because it means you don't actually have any outliers. Everything's assigned to a topic neatly, unlike BERT topic, which has a lot of outliers. So top to vec is great in this regard, but sometimes it's necessary to A, know what was originally an outlier, which this will do, we'll see that in a second, and B, it's sometimes also necessary to be able to allocate outliers to nearest topic vectors but only if they meet a certain threshold of distance. So max distance allows for us to control this. 
I'm gonna set this to 0.5 right now. This will be a little bit of trial and error to figure out if everything works correctly for you. But if we execute this cell, we see everything starts running correctly. I see that I've loaded up this particular transformer model. I see that I'm running everything on my CPU. I'm doing this demo on a CPU, not a GPU. So that you can see that this will work on most laptops. Um, uh, we're able to see that we're encoding all the documents. It did 40 batches for all 1,252 documents. And now it's taking all these documents and flattening these higher dimensional representations, which are large numbers. I think uh, for this particular transformer model, it's 384 dimensions. It's reducing them down to two dimensions, and then it's running HDB scan to find clusters, and it's already done. I can't even go through and describe everything. But let's go back real quick for just a second and explain what the last of this information explains. This next stage tells us that it's recalculating the topics, just like top to vec, but assigning a max distance of 0.5. And we're seeing that it's reallocated 272 outliers down to just two. So we still have two outliers, but that's fine. We don't want outliers that are far away from our vectors being allocated to vectors. Uh, we're also seeing that Leet Topic, like other topic modeling libraries, uses TF-IDF to get a representation of individual documents and also topics so that you know um, what, what each topic kind of corresponds to uh, with regards to keywords. And then finally, it creates the bouquet application for us. So this is the new one that was just created. Let's zoom in and see what we can do with it. Well, out of the box, what we have here are all the different documents plotted on a bouquet graph in the top left of the app. We can interact with this. We can highlight it and we see it populate in a couple different places. Down here under selection, we have all the different topics that we just happened to grab. So all of our documents fall under these categories. And then over here, we can also interact with the data on this graph and highlight that. And it'll populate the data down here so that it can be a, a bit more legible. Now, all of these are apparently are quite short. Let's grab something that's a little bit larger in text. There we go. So this document is kind of hard to read. By selecting it in the data frame, we're able to expand it and analyze it a bit more. We can copy it. We can save it elsewhere. We can start to work with that data a bit more closely. And with both of these charts, what we're also able to do is zoom in and analyze and select things a bit more specifically. So you can work with your data in a couple different ways with a couple different graphs. Over here, you kind of select what you want to analyze. And over here on the right, you can analyze this data more closely and select things. You can either select nodes in the graph or you can select nodes in the chart to populate them down here in the bottom part of the text display window. But that's really the application. You can go through and play around with this on your own. And I think it should be kind of self-explanatory. One of the things that you can do is you can go through and also select individual areas or individual topics by selecting number four, for example, or 28, for example. And we're able to see them populate both on the right side and in the data frame. So you can analyze everything by individual topic as well. The two things that are two pieces of data that are outputted are first a new data frame. And we can take a look at that. One of the things that Leet Topic gives back to the user is all of the original data in the data frame, plus the UMAP projections at X and Y coordinates, the original HDB scan labels, the Leet labels, which are the new ones that have been assigned to it, the limitized form of the document, and the top words associated with that topic as well. So in this case, this, this particular document, birth is of really high value. This one, bear, uh, I'm not entirely sure why, I can't remember a document that talks about bear, but you can keep on going down the list. Now, what can we do with this? Well, we can go through and analyze everything at the document level, but it's also important to analyze data in a topic model output at the topic level. The topic underscore data output, the second thing that is returned to the user from the lead topic function, is a series of topics in a dictionary. So if I wanted to grab topic zero, I can do that by typing in topic zero and I get a couple different pieces of information. One thing I get so that I don't have to manually go back and recalculate the centroid and all the different uh, coordinates for each document is I can automatically find the center of an individual topic. So in this case, it's plotted at 9.8 uh, by uh, x and y of negative 0.07. So the other thing that I have are the coordinates of the documents that are assigned to this particular topic. I have the limitized form of the documents assigned to this particular topic. And I have the top 
10 keywords of that particular topic. Now these can be used to give your topic some kind of, of meaning. They allow for you to understand what words make your topic a particularly unique collection of documents. And then finally we have the relevance docs. So this is a list of all the documents in that topic organized by the most relevant to the least relevant. So in this case, Topic or document 156 is the thing that represents this doc or this um, this particular cluster the best. And that allows for you to really analyze your data from a topic model output at both the document level and the topic level, as well as analyze and interrogate your data in a nice visualization. A lot of new features that are coming to this library in the near future, but hopefully this gives you enough of a cursory overview to start playing around with this. Like I said, keep a lookout for updates, star and follow the GitHub repository because multilingual support is gonna be coming soon, as well as the ability to search across all your documents with an annoy index. And again, I'll be making another video that explains all these updates as they come about. Thank you so much for all the support on this channel. Hopefully this library is a way of kind of giving back to the community. Uh, that has been following me for the past few years on YouTube. Uh, we're about to hit 13,000 subscribers as of today. And hopefully over the course of 2023, we can up that to maybe 30,000 uh, subscribers. So thanks a lot. And thanks to all the YouTube members and Patreon supporters who keep this channel afloat. All of your support goes right back into the channel to allow me to keep producing content like this video on the channel. If you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider supporting it via YouTube memberships or Patreon. Uh, both of those can be found in the, in the description down below. And as always, like and supply and think, like and subscribe and have a great day.